Welcome. In this module, we're going to create a photo gallery. Before we start creating anything, let's create a new Git branch to keep our work organized. Git branch, we have a dev and master. Let's go git checkout dash b for new branch and let's call it uh, gallery. In the previous modules, we when we needed to to upload a photo, we built the uploader right in the component. Upload photo URL and on the post as well. Here in the post, we had upload post image. Although this is okay for a small application or a single file like we're doing over here and on the user. It can become cumbersome repeating the code, the same code over and over again. So let's take a look how can we decouple the uploader from the component. We're going to create a component called upload and that will manage the upload service, where to save it, and we're going to receive this information from the component that is using the upload service. So let's create a new component called upload. We've seen this before, ng generate component. Let's put it in the share folder so we can reuse in any other component. And let's call it upload. Let's also create a service. As per service, shared. But this time I'm going to put inside the uploads folder so we keep everything organized. You can just copy and paste it when you need this feature in your next project. Let's call the service upload and add it to the share module. Okay, it was updated. We get the component. Let's go ahead and export this component as well because we're gonna need to insert it into other components. So we declare it and then we export it. Let's start with the HTML. First, let's insert this component somewhere so we can check our progress. I have my server running here. I'm going to add it in here to test in our user's um, dashboard. So go to users, dashboard. Here in the HTML, I'm just going to remove this, comment it out the dash, post dashboard for a second. And we're going to add the app upload in here. Upload works. So let's put it inside the uh, math card so it, we can see it better. Okay, that looks better. We can close and let's go back to the HTML. And here we're going to delete everything. We're going to start with a label. So add the file. And here we need the input. Type file. Let's watch for changes. So uh, detect. And then it will give us an event, the event. We need to create this detect function in our component. Next, we add a button. And here, let's say upload. It will be disabled in case uh, there is no selection. Select the file. And it's not working at the moment because this is not yet hooked up in our component. So now let's go to our component. And here let's uh, bring in the upload service. Let's create that, that detect function. So we can uh, listen for, for the change. We're gonna get the event from the input. And here it's gonna be this dot selection. Need to add this in here. That will be a file list. This is from the HTML API, this file list. So in here we are detecting 
a change in here when the user clicks. And you are saving to, to this variable and the button is not disabled anymore because there is a selection. Now, where do I get these things from? Let's console log and see. So I'm gonna open up the console. It's a very good um, debugging strategy to console log everything while you're working so you see what's happening on your code. So now let's see what's this event.target.files gave us back. So you send it a photo. We have a file list, which is the file list in there. If you open it up, we have two things. One is length and one is a zero. Zero is because uh, JavaScript is a zero-based index. If you, in case you select more files in there, we can try it out by adding a multiple in here. Then if you go in here and select more files, we have a file list and here we have zero. That is the first one that we had before. And then we have everything. So like this, you can target each of the files received. Let's console log one of those files. You need to add a uh, array and call for the number zero. And you can do the same and you can do the same for any of the files like number five in there. So when you console log, And then you got the file list. And in here you have this 957. 597 is the zero. File 171. 171 is the number five, you see? Okay, enough of this. Let's leave just that console log in there. So now we have that, but this button is not doing anything. Even if I select a photo, nothing, nothing happens when I click it. So let's add a click event to it and create a function to give it a purpose. Let's call it click event. And here, let's do an upload function. Now let's go ahead and create that upload. Let's remove this multiple in here because we're not gonna be doing multiple uploads at the moment. So in here, we're gonna get that selection and pick the file out of it and save to a variable called file. Let's create file variable and call the selection and use the zero for the first file on the list. So let's create that if statement to check the file type. File type of split. And we're going to split on the slash. And let me just finish this function. We don't get any error. Let's console log the selection again and see why we're splitting the file in here. Just choose a file here on the file list. Here we get our file list and inside the zero, you have a file type. There are two options, image and JPEG. So we want to find out if the, if the type it's an image. So here, we are splitting on the slash, so we get only the image. And then we're gonna call for zero because if there is a, a image is zero, JPEG is one. If you wanna check for like, if you only want to accept PNG files, you can do that. And in here you'd call for number one instead of zero. And then do a echo echo PNG or JPEG. But we're going to use an image and because you can accept any type of image and we're going to use the first one, the zero. So if that evaluates true, we're going to send it back to our upload service. First, let's get our upload service in our constructor. It can be a private upload service. Again, this you can name anything you like. So let's do an upload task. And here we need to think how our API is gonna behave. First, let's do the else and let's console log an arrow here, like image only. So 
what is it that we need to pass to our upload task from this component? Let's go check in our post in here. We have a upload in here. And here we needed to get a path and a file. This is this is what the upload function from the storage, Angular Fire Storage asks us. A path where to store it and what we're storing. So give it the path and the thing. But this is not gonna come from this component. We're going to add this component somewhere. So we need to ask the parent component to give us that information. And we saw that before, we use it the input to get information from, to pass information between components. And here we need the input. And it's going to ask for the path. Now we don't need to ask for the file because the file is gonna be passed through this event in here. So let's add this dot path and the file. First, they need a path where to store and then the file. I will also add some metadata in here so we can save some information with the, with the file. So let's create a, another input. And ask for meta. That would be the third, this dot meta. Now let's go to our upload service and create this upload task. Upload task. There. And we are receiving a path, a file, and meta from the component. Here in the constructor, let's start to import what we're going to need for this. We're going to Gonna need the Angular Fire Storage and also the Angular Fire Store collection so we can save it somewhere. We're also gonna need an, the observable. Now, with our implementation from before, we had some problems on the uploading function in here we created. Let me uncomment the blog dashboard so I can show you. So I have all these images and then if I create a new blog post and I use the same image because we're not changing the name of the image from our file. Let's add one more. Test. Test. I save it. And now if I go to my blog post and I refresh this one that was this had the same picture file it disappeared the reference to our storage has changed so this blog post won't have where to find the image anymore even though the image has the same name so we need to fix this so we're gonna create a new unique name for each photos we upload because you might want to put the same photos somewhere else in your app this is one implementation that you can use there are other ways, but this will work for us. So we're going to change the name of the photo before we upload it. I'm going to comment this back. Back in our upload service, in the upload task, we're going to get the file name and we're going to create a, a hash out of it. We use a, a hash service before, the MD5, when we created this gravatar hash from the user ID in here. So let's use the same thing. I'm gonna copy this one here. And in here we're gonna create a const called name hash. I'm gonna call the md5 hash string. Because the file name might be the same and the hash will probably end up being the same as well we are going to create the hash with the uh, date to it. And that will most definitely avoid creating the same file name. We're gonna take the name and we're going to add a new date to it. And then we're gonna hash it. And this will change everything from the file name, including the file extension. And here it won't be showing anymore. If you want to get that, it's, although that's not very important, the file type would be still in here the, on the type. If you need to get that, you can do that 
like this. We're going to do the same as we did before, but this time we're going to get the file extension and then we're gonna concat to the name hash. So const file, let's call it file extension, file.type, dot split. Now we need to split and get the position one in our array. So now we're gonna get the final name and that will be the name hash dot file extension. Next, we need to create a reference in our storage bucket to know where to put the file. Storage, we need to import this storage in here in our constructor. Let's go ahead and, and uh, import the Firestore as well. My private storage. Let's do Angular Fire Storage. Okay. Here in the file storage, you're gonna call ref and you're gonna pass the path, path, and also the name. So it will be a path which you're getting from the component and then it's gonna save with this name in here. Now all we have to do is create a task variable called the reference on the bucket and add put. Here we're gonna put the file and then we're going to add an object called custom metadata and you're gonna pass our meta which is the information from the component. Now we have this task, let's create some, let's get the task download URL so we can use it to save in our database. We need to create this. So here, and download the URL and it's going to be an observable string. Here we call task and then we get the download URL. The task gives all these methods in here. You can use it to cancel, to catch any error. This, this then and the catch would work as a promise that you can change something here after. And then you can use it to pause, to resume, to get the snapshot. This one is gonna give you like the progress of the upload in total bytes or so we can actually do some uh, validation to do some conditioning. But here we're going to use the download URL and that's a method. So we need to add the parentheses and this would work as our uploader. But now we need to save it to the database. We have two ways of adding files to our database. One of them is just like we did over here we add an image, which is um, a field in a document. Here we have a collection and here we have fields and that's how this image was added. For that, we would need to update the Firestore document. We did that before for the user's profile picture and the blog image. And we, we have another way of saving the file to the database, which is adding it as a collection which on this case, what we're going to do now, build now, it's what we're looking for because we need, to, every time someone uploads a photo on our database, we are gonna need to create an ID for it so we can target it in our code. With that ID, we could delete or could update, we could do things like we've done with our blog posts. Let me show you how would be the syntax for each of these ones. First, let's build the collection. We're going to need to get a Angular Firestore collection. So let's create a variable here called uploads. And this will be Angular Fire Storage Collection. And let's put any over here. So the two ways we can save this to our database. Let's do the collection, this dot uploads. And then we're gonna call the AFS collection. 
and we need to give it the path where to save it. As we cannot save an observable to our database, we need to get this download URL and we're going to subscribe to it. And now we need to extract the URL out of the observable. Now we're going to add some more information to the in our database about the file. So let's create a data variable and we're gonna give it the object, the name and the URL. As you can see the name comes from here and the URL we were extracting from the download URL observable. Now we just need to do upload.add and give it the data. And this is how you upload as a Firebase collection. This will create a new object with a name and URL and Firebase will also give us a unique ID that you can use to target this file after. Let's add the comment in here. Saves as a collection. Let's actually add a console log so we see what's happening. Console log. Saved as collection. And then we have the other type is we're going to call the download URL. Subscribe to it again. It's the same thing. The extract the URL. Now let's console log. Save as document field. And here we're going to use the AFS again called doc. Give it the path. And then you're going to do update. And here we can just do URL, that won't work. And the reason is because the document holds object key value pairs. So we need to pass that as an object. And there it is. Let's add a comment in here as well. Let's just recap what we did in here. You're changing the file name for a hash. We're extracting the file extension and put it back together. Here we are referencing the place in our storage bucket. And this is the task that we will put the file. And we also pass in it the metadata that we are receiving from our component. Here we're getting the task, the download URL from the task, creating a uploads a Firestore collection, and also giving it the path where to store it. Here we are subscribing to that observable and extracting the URL, adding it to an object with the name and saving it to our database. This add uh, method will always give us a unique ID. So we are adding it to our user, but before this can work, we need to give it some information. So as we've seen before, we ask it for a path Also, we're asking it for meta. Let's go and create this two inside our component. And this has nothing to do with this upload photo URL in here. We're gonna leave that untouched. I just put it on the user's dashboard so we can have a place where to play with it. And I can show you how to send the data from the user's component. So we need a path, which is going to be a string and the meta, gonna create an object. Let's create a function that will set the data we need. I'll call it uh, set upload data. Here we need uh, to connect the path and give it a path. And here we are in users. So let's just add it under the user's UID. But to do that, we need to get the user's ID. So let's get the same in here as we did with the user. Let's return this.alf.user and now we subscribe and uh, extract the user ID from it. We're gonna have this.path because the users and then in here we can uh, use string interpolation to get the user ID. Like that. And let's create a collection called uploads. Now the meta. So the meta is an object and you can add as many fields as you want. 
I'm gonna add the uploader uploader and that will be a, the user UID and let's give it a website so in our component we don't have any error in here anymore now let's check in our app and we're getting an error the reason is that we create this function but we didn't add it to the ng on meet so the function didn't get called now it works let's test it again upload save this collection successfully now let's check in our database just refresh it there you have it a collection in here and with a unique keys which you can use to target the name and the url so let's create a, a hash name for it and if you upload the same let's upload uh this was the 222 upload the same photo save this collection you see it created a new file with a different name now let's check in our storage let me remember we asked to save under this path user user uid user uploads so on our database it was like this user user id uploads we have our users user id which is rq and the user id down here is rq so it's the same we have an uploads folder now and in here we have the photos straight after uploads it was created with the name we gave Now that worked, let's comment out this one, this collection and use the document format. Now user dashboard, we need to remove the uploads. Okay, save it and let's try it. Upload. Saved as a document field. Now, if we look at our database, we have a URL in here, added straight in our users data. So let's let's change it again and see what happened. And we upload, saved. You see the flash means that it was updated. And because we're adding this URL object, it always gonna replace the one in here. And that's the difference between uploading as a document and or as a collection let's go back to our our service and here we're commenting and uncommenting we should allow the parent component to set the upload type if it's going to be a collection or a document field type of upload so let's add a if statement here but we need to get the information from the parent component, which is the user dashboard. We have the path and the meta in here. Let's add another one. Let's say upload type. And that's going to be a boolean. It's either true or false. Here on, the, on our set upload data, we're going to call it upload type. So if you sell it, set it to true, let's say it's going to be a collection and here on the thing let's make a collection again it's called new upload collection save it so now we need to pass this to our service and to do that we need to go to the users dashboard html and here we're going to add the upload type And it's looking like an error because we're not we are trying to send it but there is no one to receive it so now in our component we can add the input in here this input comes from that one so we're gonna receive that upload type now we've done that if you go back in here you need to save it and that disappears 
now that we receive that from the parent component we need to send it to the service like we did with the path and the file and the meta so in here this dot upload type having that and the error is uh, as expect three and you have four that's because you have not added there yet let's go to our service and here we're going to add the same okay. and now the error here is gone we're going to use the upload type to create our if statement so here let's say if upload type evaluates true we're going to save it as a collection so let's take this code in here else we're going to save it as document let's paste that inside the block Mount a little bit and here we have it if the plot type is true which we set to be true in here in our component we reset true and we are giving it a upload collection place to to save so now let's go to our component let's give a refresh just in case and i'm going to bring my firebase again here we're expecting a new collection in here let's save it let's send the photo upload save this collection we're loading here new upload collection and there we have our file the same way beautiful in our storage we go back we have the users user id and here we have a new upload collection clicking there we have our file if you select the file in here here we have the metadata we set and this metadata was set by the parent component the user dashboard so what if you want to set some app defaults uh, metadata that we don't need to add it all the time like this one would be good for for uh, app default you will tell which website it is and uh, who is the uploader we always would want to save something like this so we can add the metadata in here like we did but we also can add before we send it to, to save to add some more metadata we just need to create a new object add that metadata mix with this one and send the new object in here so let's create a new const new meta and that will be an object and here we're going to get the one from the top the one that comes from the component so you can use the spread operator to add them in here let's just add anything here some more data more data and now the only thing we need to do is send this metadata new meta instead of the data then when you send the file save it as collection the same as was before and we still save into the new uploads collection let's check in our storage bucket Now we have the second file. Let's see which one is it? Here it is. More data. Okay, now we've done that. Let's change the parent information on how it's setting up our upload. Let's change it here to false. And let's also remove this collection. We're going to the our database. Let's go to our users. I'm going to delete this URL. So we see a new one coming up now if you upload it should appear in there saved as a document and there you have it our new firebase field straight in our user and this is how we can build a file upload it receives data receives some information on how to save that data we can use, you can just drop it in your new project and you just need to remember the API we set, which is the path, meta and upload. Pass the information to the component and it will do its job.